Hello, I'm here with uh, Rhiannon Reynolds, uh, one of the senior ophthalmology trainees I work with, and uh, Mr. Gwyn Williams, consultant ophthalmologist who specialises in medical retina. Today we're going to give you a few tips uh, for the OSCE Viva uh, for the FRC Ops Part 2 exam in the UK. So firstly, uh, let's start with the Viva. So what are your top tips for people watching about how to pass the Viva? Um, I think with the Viva the uh, main issues were um, being prepared to answer absolutely any topic so uh, they can ask you anything from ophthalmology really so be fully um, aware of all the guidelines on the uh, the website, uh, the college website, as well as NICE guidelines, being aware of the DVLA um, guidelines. Uh, also you need to be quite up to date with current trends in ophthalmology and be clear in your mind between each station. You can have a bad station, you get time outside, go outside and uh, put it out of your mind before you move on to the next one. Um, do you have anything to add for the Viva? No, well I think keeping a cool head and that most important thing of all, dealing with uncertainty is the most important thing, so that even if you don't know the actual answer to the question that they're asking, that you have a structure in your mind on how to answer questions in general is the most important thing. A mistake that people do make is that if they don't know the exact answer to the question being asked, they freeze and start mumbling and look down and they don't answer the question at all. Mm. But if you confidently smile winningly at them, lean forward and tell them what you do know, then you'll be able to at least convince them that uh, you know something and can work with the information that you do know. And don't be afraid if you uh, don't understand what they're actually asking you for to ask them to repeat what they were saying or ask them to ask it in a different way. So another mm -hmm. part of the uh, Viva is they add the communication skills to it. Uh, do you have any advice about that station, Gwyn? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, read the scenario is the most important thing. Read the piece of paper. You might think, just read it, yada, 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 something to do with the cataract, I've got it, start. You have to read it properly to get all the nuances. Otherwise, you just stress yourself uh, afterwards. Then you go go inside, even though it's very obviously an actor who is there, in most cases at least, it is important to treat it like a patient as you would in clinic. For after all, they are just wanting to see that you're a competent colleague, not a, um, auditioning for Holby City. <laughs> So sometimes it's not always about breaking bad news, it might be uh, uh, going over a treatment or medication side effects for example. But if the patient does cry, uh, you should always offer them a tissue, even an invisible one, <laughs> and always give a leaflet at the end again, even an invisible one. And if you break bad news, ask them if they would like to go somewhere quiet, would they like a cup of tea, and you will bring someone to come and sit with them. Even though it's, it's obviously negative. role play. Yeah. Yeah. On the plus side, uh, in the communication station, e be being as everything is invisible, you have at your fingertips access to a wide array of staff and other things. So then mm -hmm. a couple of days later you'll go on to have your OSCE exam. Uh, so what are your top tips for the OSCE exam, Yeah. Well I think with the OSCE exam the most important thing is preparation. Um, someone said to me, who is a professional bodybuilder, actually said, uh, when they're uh, preparing for a competition they train hard to win easy and I think that was the biggest um, piece of advice you could give for this really so all the preparation is is beforehand um, making sure you work in a group working with other people who are in the same situation as you um, and really talking out loud which sounds a ridiculous thing to say but when you start um, your study and you feel like a bit of an idiot saying things in front of people and you need to get over that you need to get over the fact that you sound like a bit of an idiot and then other things uh, in preparation, making sure you've got very slick routines to uh, to each station um, and repeating them and repeating them and repeating them over and over again on each other, um, make-believe signs and, and so on. And then um, having a, a, a plan for the station, when you go into the station, think what you're going to do because initially when you start you might be a bit like a rabbit in the headlights so you my god what am I going to do so if you have something in your in your head that you can always start with um, it's a good way to get your brain working okay um, again have a, a string of um, 
possible uh, diagnosis at your hand, what causes optic atrophy, list of white dot syndromes and so on, so you can reel these off without thinking. The other thing is, is when you get in there, treat it like a, a normal clinical situation. So the patient is a patient, they've come, they've given up their time, and talk to them like they are a patient. Make sure they're comfortable and so on. Smile, eye contact, behave like a real person. They're looking for someone who's going to make a competent consultant ophthalmologist. They don't want someone who, who can't have a conversation with people. And if you do finish early, that's fine. You'll go outside, you'll be asked to wait. That doesn't mean that uh, you fail the station. That what they're looking for isn't massive amounts of Kansky-esque knowledge about every subject, but just that your methodology is right. And even if you don't know the answer, that you'd know how you'd obtain the answer, or if you don't know how to obtain the answer, that you know a person who would know how to obtain the answer. But they don't expect you to say, ah, that must be an ABCA4 gene mutation, clearly, and I need to know other investigations because I know it so brilliantly. That's not what they like. No, absolutely. And, and uh, remember, you can have a whole range of uh, things from someone who simply has um, some posterior uh, capsular opacity after cataract surgery to the most obscure. Don't go in expecting to see the weird and wonderful. Go in expecting to see a, a clinical patient and approach it in the same way that you would. That's great. So the last thing to say is make sure you dress appropriately. Take the equipment that you're used to, your own a torch, your own occluder, things like that. And uh, remember to roll up your sleeves and then you'll be ready to go. <laughs> so good luck from us uh, for your exams. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs>